This is Photoshop from the Ground Up. I'm Peter Law, photographer and graphic designer. In this episode, we're going to look at the most basic adjustment inside of Photoshop. That's the image size command. So I've got an image open, and I'm going to go to my file menu. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to click on my image menu, and I'm going to choose image size. Now, this little thing here tells me the keyboard shortcut, and in this case, uh, I'm on the Mac, so that means option, and this means command and I. So option, command, and I. If you're on a PC, that would be alt, control, and I for the same keyboard shortcut. Now, keyboard shortcuts are a great way to speed up your efficiency as you work, but as I'm demonstrating things, I'm going to try and shy away from using them just so that you have the visual reference of knowing where things are in the menu. This image is 576 pixels wide, 720 pixels high, which is an 8 by 10 at 700 or at 72 pixels per inch, which is a standard screen uh, resolution. So what I'm going to do is if I decide I want to say change this from 576 down to say 400, I'm just going to click 400. And you'll notice that the height has also resized proportionately. And that's because I have this checkbox right here on, constrained proportions, which typically when you're working with a photograph, you're always going to want to do. Because otherwise, if I change this to 400, it's going to make the document shorter, but it's not going to make it uh, it's going to make it, sorry, skinnier, but it's not going to make it any higher. So suddenly, um, we're just going to get squished. And unless you want to do that, you know, as your effect, you'll want to keep that constrained proportion on. We haven't dealt with, with styles yet, so we're not going to worry about that. And then resample image. Resampling image is basically when you're adding or taking away pixels. Typically speaking, when you're resizing an image, you don't want to go up if you can help it in any way. When you add pixels to an image, you're actually just going to soften everything because Photoshop doesn't know what kind of detail is supposed to be there. That whole zoom in and enhance thing that you see in movies is complete nonsense. That doesn't work in the real world. So I'm going to keep resample image checked on this because I actually do want to change the number of pixels in the image. Now I want 400 to 500 pixels and it's going to be at 72 pixels per inch. And if I click OK, my image reduces in size. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to choose Undo Image Size. That's Command-Z on the Mac, Control-Z on the PC to undo. Now, I'm going to go to my Image Size dialog box again, Image, Image Size, and I'm going to turn off this Resample Image checkbox. And you'll notice this whole area here doesn't let me actually input any values anymore. And that's because when I'm res not resampling image, I'm not actually changing the number of pixels in the image. I'm simply changing the way that they're arranged. So in this case, if I change this to 10, now it's a 10 by a 12 and a half, and you'll notice this resolution actually changed on its own. And that's because I have a set number of pixels. So I say, OK, I have 576 pixels, and I want to stretch those out over 10 inches. So therefore, well, we do the math. 576 divided by 10 is 57.6. So we have a resolution of 57.6. Now what if I actually change this resolution to say 300? Well, you'll notice that the width and height changed. So now they're 1.92 by 2.4 inches. So what ends up happening when we have resample image changed off is we can change the resolution, which is basically how densely put together those pixels are going to be if we print this. And the document size will actually in increase or decrease proportionately. Or I can change the document dimensions, and the resolution will increase or decrease proportionately. Now I'm going to turn the resample image back on. We have this little drop box down here. This is called the interpolation intent. And this is the formula, the magic formula that Photoshop uses to calculate um, when it's adding or taking away pixels. Now, uh, these first two here, nearest neighbor and bilinear, there's no, no reason to, le to use them at all. Typically, bicubic is a good option to have set on most of the time. If you're actually going to make an image bigger, which I would avoid, advise against if you can help it in any way, always go back to your camera file and start with the highest possible quality and size image. But if you have to make it bigger, go bicubic smoother. You can use bicubic sharper. It says here that it's best for reduction. Typically speaking, though, it, the extra snap that it gives your pictures is only really usable if you're reducing down for screen resolution. If you're going to print, the sharpening that's applied there will be completely eradicated when the, that ink hits the paper and spreads out. It's not enough sharpening to really kind of make a difference. So for the most part, I just leave this set to bicubic, 
and I can click OK to clear out of there. So that's how we resize images inside of Photoshop. 